الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to our graduates and to their families and friends The Islamic Center of South Florida welcomes you and are very happy to have you with us so we can celebrate with you and you can celebrate with your community We're going to start off with the recitation of the Quran from one of the graduates MashaAllah she memorizes the Quran so please come on up I hope uh, that you guys understood those ayat, but I'm doubtful that everybody understood the Arabic. So I'm going to tell you generally what these ayat were all about. We're celebrating your success tonight. MashaAllah, you've made it this far. And this ayat, these ayat of Surah Al-Mu'minun in the Quran, Surah number 23, talks about success. There are many ayat that talk about success in the Quran and I encourage every one of you to look for those ayat so you can understand what the real meaning of success is. So the general meaning of these ayat talks about those who have succeeded who are humble in their prayer, meaning that they can focus in their prayer and get the benefit of it and get that peacefulness from being concentrating and being humble in their prayer. And also another characteristic of these successful people and believers that Allah talks about are the ones that stay away from vain talk. They don't waste their time gossiping and talking about other people. Another characteristic is those who purify their wealth. Those who pay their zakah to help the poor as they are obligated to do so to help the society succeed as a whole. And those who guard their chastity, those who only establish lawful relationships between, between men and women. And those who keep their promises, those whose word means something. When they say something, they stick to it. When they promise, they deliver. These are some of the characteristics of these successful people. And also the last one, is those who maintain their prayers. You know, being regular in doing something and not procrastinating and being insistent, that's one of the ways that you can succeed. Success doesn't come easy, you have to work hard for it, and the Salah being maintaining it and being steady with it helps you in that regard. So again, Jazakallah Khair for your recitation of these beautiful ayat. And now, um, I want to ask Sheikh Hassan, the Imam of this Islamic Center of South Florida, to come up and give us a speech to the graduates and their families.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I start by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this beautiful gathering. I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has brought us today in this occasion of joy because indeed it fills my heart with joy to see these beautiful faces of young Muslims, both young men and young women, who we see as our extension and our future in this country and in this land. You are moving in this life from one stage to another. And as you move and climb this ladder of life and move from success to another, from one stage to another, remember that you have, you have roots and that you have an identity and that you know who you are all the time. A person without an identity, identity is a lost person. In order to be a successful person, you're supposed to have a past, and you are supposed to have a present, and you are supposed to have a future. Make your past, your roots, deep in the history of your ummah that started with our Prophet and his call to the oneness of Allah and to the worship of Allah and taught us the meaning of life who we are, why we are here, and where we are going. Make your present always filled with good things, with useful tasks. Learn new skills. Life is all about learning. Make sure that you utilize every, every moment of your life for something that will get you closer to your goals, and certainly closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and have a future always set up goals and every time you achieve one make sure that you do not say that this is the end especially when it comes to knowledge i am sure you know the story of musa alayhi salam when he thought that he knows it all and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him on a journey with al-khadr and he discovered that he knows very little and that knowledge is a big huge body that the quest for it never ends. And that knowledge is also associated with Iman and with belief. Allah says in the Quran, Knowledge, ilm, science alone is like a bird that has one wing only, without morality, without having higher principles and higher goals in life. It will not make you fly. Make sure that as you are seeking knowledge all the time, that you are decent, and that you are moral, and that you are a representative of a great people. I want to con congratulate you today, share with your joy, and congratulate your parents as well. Your success is their success, and definitely it is the success of our community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide your steps in the future. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make your greatest graduation party in the hereafter. When you will be declared to be dwellers of paradise. In the company of the righteous and in the company of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And uh, now we're going to ask one of the college graduates um, to come up and say a few words. Omran Muhammad Barghul, come on up. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, akhwati, akhwati. I I would thank you to my amazing mom and dad for bringing me here and providing me the opportunity and guiding me to be where I am today. I want to thank my community, the mosque, and my teachers for aiding me and leading me to where I stand. Because you know, it takes a village to be here. I want to tell you a little bit about my background and this, the decision that led me to this point in my life. 
After graduating high school, I was lost. I didn't know what to do next or where to go next with my life. So I started my journey at Broward College in Davie, and I first started off as a human resource management, but I was not satisfied with that career because all I was worried about was money and how much money I was gonna make. I wanted a future that would have an impact not just on our state, on our country, but the whole world, which led me to a major in international relations. My dream is to become a diplomat and be able to negotiate and help with peacemaking and make the Middle, Middle East a more peaceful place. Um, since starting my journey, uh, um, after graduating from Broward College and moving on to Florida International University, I have, done, I have accomplished many goals. I interned in Washington, D.C. with Meridian International Center, which provided me with the opportunity to do soft diplomacy with Korea, Africa, and Europe. And then after that, I went to um, the University of Michigan, where I got a fellowship in public policy and international affairs. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And then after that, I was also accepted into the Intelligence Community Fellowship and also into the International Relations Honor Society, and I received multiple scholarships. And the whole point of all of this is to show you that when you follow your dream and the pursuit for what your heart wants, you can accomplish anything in life. And right now, the doors are opening for all of us to make the world a more peaceful and prosperous place. Thank you so much. MashaAllah, barakallah feek, Amran. So these are college graduates on the girls' side. The first one is Diana Hassan with a doctorate of nursing. Jabbar with a doctor of child psychiatry and neuropsychiatry. Her father is taking the plaque for her and the mother. <laughs> Next is Lina Muhammad the best doctor of pharmacy. And her father will take the plaque for her. The Master of Science in Psychology concentration <laughs> of Physician assistant. 
Alex is not here. Okay, now I think we're, we're going through the bachelor degrees. Fatma Amin, psychology major. from Jordan, but I see there's another chance here. So I started in a medical field and I achieved it. It's hard for a mom and a wife after these years to start again, but if you have a goal, if you have uh, anything you want to achieve it, work hard for it, and with support, you will achieve it. Thank you for, I want to thank my family, my mom, everyone in Jordan, but the big support here is my husband, Ahmed Alishbour, and my Lamar, and Amir, and my sister. Thank you very much. Okay, next is Heba Jamal, a Saudi psychology major. side is, is it Farha? Farha. Farha. Farha Majid Faraj. I'm going 
and buy the English uh, the English writing here, so sometimes they tell me it's different. It's a lot of people. Okay, next is Haytham Hussain, mechanical engineer. I guess he's not here. Okay, next is Usama Khaled, political science and international affairs. Osama's mother will take it for him. Okay, next is Abdullah Najjar, Marketing Analytics. Associate of Science and Computer Science. Okay, his mother will receive it for him. stay safe, you and your families, and hopefully everybody had time to stay home and reflect about their life, and reflect about what's important in life, and I hope that our graduates had a chance to do that, and this will help you when you reflect, it'll help you make better decisions, inshallah. Some of the things to think about for the high school graduates that will be coming up soon when they're selecting a major is to take advantage of the information that's available to you. One of the main things is the personality test that's available in your school, online, and when you go to college, um, at the student services, at the advisors at the college. You need to make sure you take advantage of that so you know what your personality type is like, what type of work works for your personality, and what doesn't. 
Another thing is to make sure you take a lot of different courses the first year of college so you expose yourself to different subjects before you decide. Because we hear a lot of people, a lot of students, when they first graduate, they say, I'm taking biology because I want to be a doctor. And then you find that maybe just 1% ends up going in that direction. So you need to make sure that you expose yourself to a number of subjects before you decide on one subject. That's your major. You also need to think about your values. What aligns with your values? What is it that you are willing to do, that you like to do, that you'd be willing to wake up every morning to want to do? And what doesn't work for you? Think about what you're good at. When you take these different subjects, see what you like and what you're good at, what you can easily work for and enjoy studying, and you can continue with it. Also look for, uh, there, there's a book, and I have a list here that I'm, that's um, gonna be handed out to you. There's a book called 80,000 Hours, Find a Fulfilling Career That Does Good. 80,000 Hours designates what they think is the average hours that you would work in your career. It translates into about 40 years of work. So if you're gonna be doing 80,000 hours, 40 years, after you graduate, you might as well look into these different ways that will help you select your career. And again, when you talk about values, and we talk about majors, think about the impact that you want to have on your society, on your community, on the world, like we heard uh, Omran talk about. The people that affect us the most, that affect societies, okay, are the ones that shape the public opinion. They're the ones that have the most major impact on our lives. They tell us what we like, what we don't like, how we should dress, what we should do. Those people are usually not the engineers or the doctors. They're usually the ones in the media, the journalists, the authors, the writers, the educators, the teachers, the university professors, the civil rights activists and lawyers, the technology wizards, with the technology boom that we're seeing these days and the public relations experts. So think of your journey ahead as a lifelong learning journey as Sheikh Hassan talked about. You need to take advantage. This country provides opportunities that no other country provides as far as knowledge. Just like you heard Sister Shok, you heard Sheikh Hassan talk about. You need to take advantage of that and realize that. There are people that are willing to give up everything to make it here so that they can go to colleges and be able to do research and, and be able to enjoy the educational system that's available here. And knowledge and the source of knowledge starts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the source of knowledge. So knowledge without your relationship with Allah means nothing. If you want your knowledge to mean something, you have to relate it to Allah and do what you need to do in the course of following Allah's commands. This way, inshallah, you will be successful. And there is no excuse for not learning these days because we're in the age of technology. You have on your phone, your smartphone at your fingertips, you have so much knowledge available that it used to take years ago, it used to take people years to travel on horseback, okay, to go learn just one thing or another. Now you have lectures available to you. So instead of driving for an hour somewhere, okay, and wasting your time, find a lecture that you can listen to on YouTube that you can benefit from. There's no excuse not to be knowledgeable in these days. Okay, and now, we're going to start with the high school graduates with the girls' side. And the first one on the list is Sama Ali. Now, I forgot to say when you come up, Sama and, and all the other graduates, high school graduates, I need you to come up here and tell us what high school you graduated from and what major and college you want to go to. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Um, 
I just graduated from Pembroke Pines Charter High School. I plan on going to NOAA Southeastern University, inshallah, and majoring, double majoring in biology and international relations, inshallah. Her father is a, is a colleague of mine and a doctor in engineering. He's a PhD in engineering, mashallah. Dr. Dr. Hisham Ali. Okay. Next on the list is Tala Atway. I graduated from Dwyer High School and I'm majoring in computer science at the University of Florida. Go Gators. Two of my kids are Gators. Next is Rajain Mahmoud the best. I graduated from South Plantation High School and inshallah I'm going to FAU to major in political science. Next is Bianca Faraj. Sanat Faraj. Um, I graduated from West Broward High School and inshallah I'm going to go into pharmacy at Nova. Next is Emily Hamdan. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I attend uh, FAU. I graduated from Olympic. Heights and I'm majoring in criminal justice. By the way, Emily and, uh, and Tella used to go to uh, weekend school here in the Islamic Center. Their families have been part of the center since the beginning. Next is Aya Ibrahim. Next is Sarah Ibrahim. Uh, 
Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I graduated in Nur Islam and I'm going to FIU majoring in biomedical engineering, inshallah. MashaAllah, it's nice to see somebody graduating from an Islamic uh, full time school. Next is Nouri Tayyim. from Somerset Canyons and I will be studying kinesiology at Florida Atlantic University. Yeah, mashallah. Noor, Noor also attended weekend school here in the Islamic Center and her family's always been part of the center. Um, next is Jana Kahuk. Western High School, and I'm going to St. Thomas to study psychology. Next is Zahdiya Masoud. I guess she's not here. Okay. Next is Marwa Muntasir. Next is Mina Najjar.
next is uh, Mena uh, Kritsarik. Uh, that's Mursad's son, uh, Mursad's daughter, sorry. Right? No. She's not here. Yeah, her father, Mursad, um, helped out earlier, I hear, today. And he used to help us a long time ago in the, uh, with the weekend school. He's now a professor, mashallah, of political science at Broward College and um, is playing an important part in our community. Okay, um, the, the gift bags that are being handed out to the graduates um, I'm sure you're going to be getting a lot of gifts, and you're going to be looking forward uh, probably more for the green than, than anything, anything else uh, when it comes to gifts. But the best gift that lasts, as we were talking about, is knowledge. And one of the things that we uh, put in that gift bag for you is a list of Islamic resources that you will benefit from. Knowledge is power. Don't look for the green and throw this away. Okay, um, keep this with you and some of the things that are listed on here are websites and social media resources for some very impactful members of the American Muslim community such as uh, Sheikh Omar Sulaiman with the Akeen Institute, uh, Suhaib Wab, uh, Nu'man Ali Khan with his Bayina um, uh, website, uh, Imam Yasser Burjas, uh, Yasser Qadi, there are so many of these speakers that have affected a lot of our young people and made them better. So please look at this list. Some of the other things that we listed here for you, if you would listen, is the commentary on the Quran. We realize that a lot of American born don't really understand the Quran and if they just read the meaning, it doesn't give them the full reflection of how it affects their lives. So there are certain books written by like uh, Imam Maududi called Towards Understanding the Quran. They have, they have commentaries. When we mentioned Hessa, things started to, <laughs> to shoot here. <laughs> so, so, so this is gonna be your best resource. Okay, read the commentary on the verses not just the meaning, because they talk about your life and how it impacts your life and it relates to your life. There are some books in here, like I mentioned, the 80,000 hours about your career, a book that's called Taqdeer, Gratitude Journal. It encourages you to do daily reflections on your life. And there are also references uh, for hadith. And also we have a list here of speakers that you should listen to about the Palestinian and the Israeli issue or the Arab-Israeli issue and conflict. There are many good lectures on YouTube. Some of the people we listed here is like the late Edward Said, the Palestinian American professor from the University of Columbia, Noam Chomsky, Ilan Pepe, who is an Israeli professor who is working harder for our cause than some of us are doing it. He's exposing the crimes and the war crimes that took place in 1948. So nobody can call him an anti-Semitic because he's actually an Israeli Jew who is telling the truth. There is Norman Finkelstein, who's also a Jewish professor who is speaking on behalf of civil rights and human rights. There's Professor, professor Rashid Khalidi. And there's also some references about well-being and psychology. If you could just listen, please. We heard some of you wanted to major in psychology and some of you have majored already in psychology. You need to understand that when it comes to these social sciences, the Western perspective is not the true perspective. You have to see things from the true perspective which starts with the Islamic perspective. So for example, there's a convert who is a doctor of psychology, his name is Abdullah Rothman, that we listed here for you. 
is the director of the International Association of Islamic Psychology. He really changed his view on psychology when he started, when he converted to Islam and started to understand the outlook of Islam on psychology instead of the Western and the Freud outlook on psychology. So you can benefit a lot from that. There's also the KhalilCenter.com, which is a psychology uh, focused center by Muslims. That is a good resource. They just published a new book on the Islamic perspective on psychology. They also have help centers for people in need of help. If you are going to college and you're having issues, you can always reach out to them and they can help you with any issues you may be having. So please pay attention to this uh, list of resources. Barakallah Fikr. Okay, and before we introduce um, the high school graduates on the uh, boys' side, we want to listen to uh, Yusuf Al Halabi, one of the graduates, giving us a speech. Assalamu alaikum. Salkhir al Tikaf, Ailat, Kharijin. Good evening, families, friends, fellow graduates, and college graduates. I know that I'm going to talk about the Kharij Madrasa Tainawiya, and I'm going to talk about the Kharij Madrasa Tainawiya. I'm going to talk about the Kharij Madrasa Tainawiya. I'm going to talk about the Kharij Madrasa Tainawiya. I'm going to talk about the Kharij Madrasa Tainawiya. I'm going to talk about the Kharij Madrasa Tainawiya. معنا عليه اليوم شخص شغوف بابتسامي ومسلم جيد It's an honor to stand in front of you as a high school graduate and as a person who served this mosque with a smile I want to thank the people who work behind the scene to make this lovely event especially my mom and my dad for leading me to be whatever am I today. Thank you. And I, in the life of the human being, it is about six steps and steps we learn from them. To the success of the success. There is a long journey and a long journey, but remember that after all the success of the success. Human life, it's a series of mistakes and step backs that we learn from speeches and reach up to success. And, there's, and there is a long and short hardship, but remember that after hardship, there is success. Lantara Noor and Lantara Noor and Tahtul لن تشعر ببرودة المطر وأنت تحمل مظلتك في يدك لن تكتشف العالم وأنت تبني حولك الحواجز والجدران لن ترى الحياة بطريقة واضحة بسبب القلق والخوف والحرص المستمر وأنت محب الخوف وحيدا لكن تذكر أن لديك والدين عائلة وأقارب ومجتمع إسلامي You will never see you will never see the light where you're under the shade. You would never feel coldness of the rain while you're holding your umbrella in your hand. You will not discover the world while you're building a wall around you. You will not see life a clearly, a clear way because of anxiety, fear, fear, and contact constant uh, care and you are right being scared alone but remember that you have parents family relative siblings and islamic community مجرد تذكير جميل بانك مسيطر على حياتك كلها يمكنك ان تجعل هذا اليوم ما تريد ويمكنك ان تشعر بما تريد لديك تلك القدره على التحكم في كل ذلك 
ولا تدع الأشياء تدخل إليك وتزعجك لأنك تستحق أن تكون سعيدا وتختار أن تكون إيجابيا فهذا خيار أحيانا وأحيانا يكون من الصعب أن تكون كذلك and just a lovely reminder that you are control in your whole entire life you can make this day whatever you want and you can feel whatever you want you have the ability to control all that and do not let anything get in, into you and be able to change that and don't let them bother you because you have you deserve to be happy and choose to be positive it's a choice sometimes and sometimes it's hard to be واريد ان اقول لخريجي المدرسه الثانويه تابعين لي اهنيكم على حياتكم التي بدات للتو وتهنئه خريجي الكليه واتمنى لكم التوفيق في خطواتكم التاليه في الحياه i want to graduate all my fellow high school graduates and your life just started now and uh, congrats for my college graduates congratulations and i wish you luck on your next step of life be positive be passionate and be proud to be a muslim Yusuf. Um, Yusuf, by the way, is one of the, uh, if you don't mind me saying, the Syri Syrian refugees that came to this country from Syria. And, uh, he was helping us in the weekend school, volunteering, always with a smile, mashallah, always having the best manners and uh, a good, inshallah, example for, for others. And um, we're going to start with the, you're the first one, by the way, uh, on the list of the high school boys, so you might as well come up, Yusuf Al-Halabi. This guy graduated 50 years ago. His name is Thabit Hassan, but it must be his grandson. I graduated from Vero Beach High School and I'll be attending Nova Southeastern University doing dentistry. Next is Jamal Kahoo. His sister is going to take it for him. Graduated from Western High School and now he's going to Nova Southeastern studying sports management. Right. 
Next is Nizar Khalid. His mother will receive it for him. system that everything is relative you cannot judge things and that's wrong you can there is right and there is wrong like Allah says you have a chance to influence others you will be meeting people that have never met a Muslim before or someone of Arab descent before so you will have a chance to influence their ideas that they get from the media but you will only be able to do that if you teach yourself first. So make sure that you work on yourself and you look at these resources. Make sure when you go to college that you join a Muslim organization like the MSA, okay? Because you're gonna learn a lot and when you are part of a Muslim group, you will protect yourself that way and you make sure that you don't go in the wrong direction. You will also benefit from volunteering and from taking leadership roles when you join these organizations. And there's a saying that says if you don't contribute anything to the world, then you are a burden on this world. So please don't be a burden. Contribute positively to this world. You have a beautiful chance ahead of you. Nothing can stop you. I know you hear this all the time, but it's true. If we had to do it, the older generation all over again, we see that there was so much potential that we missed out on, and it's all in front of you. Leave a legacy for yourself leave an impact on people, that's how will people remember you by, is how you affect them, that's the legacy you leave. You don't want to just live a normal life and die a normal death and not affect anybody and not have anyone mention your name after you die. May Allah grant you success and hidayah and we're so proud of you and you need to thank your parents because those who don't thank people don't thank Allah so let's give a big round of applause to your parents <laughs> 